Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this R35. This is a 72nd scale plastic kit from First to Fight, intended for their war game Rajaijin 1939. The back of the box, as usual for these kits, shows a basic painting guide suggesting both Hataka and Vallejo colours. There's also a bit of information about the R35 in Polish, German, and English. And a set of instructions. It is a relatively simple model, so these instructions aren't overly complicated. They are a little bit small though. If you find that to be a problem, and your eyes don't come with a zoom function, there's a set of instructions on the First to Fight website, and for your convenience, there's a link in the description below. Inside the box, we find several sprues, and these do look pretty good. The detail is very nice, especially considering that this is intended as a wargaming model. I do say that about First to Fight kits pretty much every time, but it is true. Obviously I don't have a PhD in R35, so I can't tell you exactly how accurate a representation of that tank this model is, but it looks pretty convincing to me. The sprues are neatly moulded, and as best I can tell, mostly free from errors. There does seem to be a bit of misalignment at the front of the hull, but that could have been a mistake on my part. I know, Herbert making a mistake? That's not possible. But there's a first time for everything. Rimshot sound effect goes here. Clean up when removing the parts from the sprues is pretty minor and easy. There isn't much by way of mould lines, so most of the clean up is going to be where you've cut the sprue gates. There's a few smaller sprues with one or two parts on them, and I suspect the reason for that is that there's a couple of variants of the R35, so it probably makes sense to have multiple smaller sprues rather than one big sprue with a lot of different parts. Though me and my bits box really would have preferred lots of leftover parts. What matters though is that the parts we do have are pretty good and should go together nicely. This kit comes with a set of decals, and I don't know how French markings work, but it looks like there's a few options here, so if you're building multiple R35s, you can give them different markings. Okay, let's glue some bits of plastic together. I start with the hull. It's pretty simple to glue this together, and there's a couple of guide pins in the middle. I apply pressure to minimise gaps, and it's together. I didn't notice it right away, but it does seem to be slightly misaligned at the front. I didn't miss with the guide pins, or it would be a lot more noticeable. It's not super obvious, so moving along, I add the whole rear. This goes on easily enough, but it did need a bit of pressure to go all the way into place with minimal gaps. I then add these final drive duvers at the front. These are shaped such that you can't put them on too wrong without some effort. There was a bit of a gap, particularly on the right side, and that might also be due to the hull being out of alignment, or me being bad at models. It could be either. Still, it's not the worst problem. I mean, it's not like you can't fill gaps in. Now, tracks. The first thing to do here is to put the idler wheel into the tyre, I guess, for said idler. This has a fairly snug fit, and I had to press fairly hard to get the wheel all the way in. I would suggest being careful when doing this, so you don't bend anything out of place with your mighty pressure applying abilities. Then I press the track sets onto the sides of the hull. There are two mounting points for these, at the idler and drive sprocket, and that's probably enough, but if you want you could always add some glue where the bogies contact the hull. The axles for the idlers did seem to need a bit more pressure than I'd expected, and I'm not sure they're on exactly straight, but the tracks are on, and they look like they're in the right place. It is now turret time. I figured it was a good idea to start with the gun. This comes as two parts, which are easily glued together. I appreciate that the end of the gun has been slide moulded. No drilling for me, or for you. Then I install the little thingy doovers. I guess they're vision devices. These go into the sides of the turret, and they need to be pressed into place from the inside. It's pretty easy, but I did find it a little bit fiddly to press them all the way into place, mostly because it was kind of hard to get my finger in behind them. I got it done though, and as is tradition, I add glue so they stay there. There's another very similar one of these for the front of the turret, and it's installed in exactly the same way. With that done, we can close the turret up. Both the gun and rear hatch need to be sandwiched into place between the upper and lower turret parts, and it seemed like it would be difficult to hold all those parts together, so I glued them. Obviously this means I need to get the turret top on pretty fast, so I can nudge those parts into the positions I want them in. 
I wanted the rear hatch closed, it is possible to push this part in too far, which is why I didn't just glue it to the upper hole part before sandwiching them together. You could always push it back out through the hole in the bottom of the turret if you push it in too far. On top of the turret we add this little dome. There's a couple of little raised bits on this, and those should face toward the front. I nudge it and press it into place so that it's sitting nice and evenly. Then this antenna looking thing. This doesn't have any guide pins, so you've just got to kind of eyeball it. There were meant to be some little lift hook things at a couple of points on the turret, but the carpet monster devoured one, so I didn't bother putting the rest on. I'm sure I will soon be the recipient of an angry letter from the Lifting Hook Association of Australia. Now the turret's done, it's time to add more details to the hull, like this muffler. It mounts into the two holes here at the left rear, and it might be a good idea to put this on at the same time as the exhaust pipe on the back of the hull, just in case you need to nudge both of those parts to get them lined up. I didn't do that. It wasn't a problem, it's just something that occurred to me just now. I followed that part with some shovels and other rod-like things. On the front, I put this doohickey in place. I think it's a horn, or maybe a siren. It is small, which makes it kind of fiddly. Then, in front of that, I add what looks to be quite a long blackout light or convoy light or whatever you want to call them. It's a light with a weirdly long hood. It is also slightly fiddly because of its size. Next, I went to add the shackles to the front of the hull, and this is where that misalignment I spoke about became obvious. The mounting brackets just don't line up, and so the shackle won't fit over the top of them. The solution was to trim them with my trusty knife, and then the shackles went into place easily. They do need a little bit of nudging so that they're on straight and look as though gravity is acting upon them, but it's nothing too challenging. At the rear, I add this little shelf. I don't know what this is for. Maybe it's just a spot for the crew to have a nice little snack. Maybe some cheese and a little bit of wine. Delightful. Then rear shackles. These are a bit different to the ones that go on the front, but they're installed in pretty much the same way. This time, no trimming was needed. We might want to use our R35 to tow a trailer, or maybe an artillery piece or something. So a towing hitch goes into place here. Simple enough. I then add the part of the exhaust system that comes out of the hull and around to the muffler, and the pipe should obviously contact the muffler. There's no mounting hole for it, so you'll have to eyeball it a bit, but it's not too difficult. On the right side of the hull, a jack, or at least that's what I think it is. And then this thing. I don't know, but it looks like a board with tools on it, and I think that might be the starting crank moulded onto it. There's nothing to really guide this, so I've eyeballed it and put it where it looks like it should be. How dare you be so imprecise! You need to do your research! Well, the model is now finished. Let's check out some of that sick locking tab mechanism action. Hell yeah. The 72nd scale R35 from first to fight is now complete and ready to fight. Perhaps it will be first to fight. Ha ha ha. Yes, very funny. Anyway, it's a nice little model of a tank that I think is pretty interesting. I do like French tanks, and I should build more of them. There are, obviously, a couple of lifting hooks missing from this model, but I don't really think that detracts from it, and it still looks good. I'm rather happy with it. These kits are, of course, intended as gaming models, but they do also work very well as display models. I don't really intend to play with them, so I guess for me, that's what they are. Obviously a 35th scale model is going to be more detailed, but for its size, this model is pretty good. The kit does have its minor issues, mostly the front of the hull being a little bit out of alignment, and I still don't know if that's my fault or a defect the kit has. And if it is a defect, I've got no idea if this affects all kits or just mine. If you've built one of these and encountered the same issue, let me know in the comments below. I did actually buy a different first to fight R35 a long time ago, and that kit had a pretty major defect. Half of one of the track sets was just not moulded, there was nothing there. Obviously I didn't build the kit. My attempt at contacting First to Fight went unanswered, which obviously I was not impressed by. They are a Polish company so maybe it was a language thing. It's probably not a common defect, and it's probably fine to pick one up if you want, I just figured maybe it was worth noting. Despite that, I do enjoy First to Fight's models, as evidenced by how many of them I've done now. This kit was fun, and it didn't include any super easy to break parts, which is nice. 
Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section below. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live on stream, check out my Twitch channel, which is where I stream. The link is in the description. If you haven't already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube? It's free, and there's probably worse things you can do. Or if you have the means, and you want to help a Herbert Herbert do Herbert Herbert Herb things, like making videos about bits of plastic being glued together, as well as seeing my videos a bit early before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. I'll be back soon, so until then, take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.